There was music from my neighbor's house through the summer nights. In his blue gardens, men and girls came and went like moths among the whisperings and the champagne and the stars. At high tide in the afternoon, I watched his guests diving from the tower of his raft or taking the sun on the hot sand of his beach while his two motorboats slit the waters of the sound, drawing aquaplanes over cataracts of foam. After the house, we were to see the grounds, and the swimming pool, and the hydroplane, and the midsummer flowers. But outside Gatsby's window, it began to rain again. So we stood in a row, looking at the corrugated surface of the sound. If it wasn't for the mist, we could see your home across the bay, said Gatsby. You always have a green light that burns all night at the end of your dock. Daisy put her arm through his abruptly, but he seemed absorbed in what he had just said. Possibly it had occurred to him that the colossal significance of that light had now vanished forever. Compared to the great distance that had separated him from Daisy, it had seemed very near to her, almost touching her. It had seemed as close as a star to the moon, now it was again a green light on a dock. His count of enchanted objects had diminished by one. I stayed late that night. Gatsby asked me to wait until he was free. And I lingered in the garden until the inevitable swimming party had run up, chilled and exalted from the black beach, until the lights were extinguished in the guest rooms overhead. When he came down the steps at last, the tanned skin was drawn unusually tight on his face, and his eyes were bright and tired. She didn't like it, he said immediately. Of course she did. She didn't like it, he insisted. She didn't have a good time. He was silent, and I guessed at his unutterable depression. I feel far away from her, he said. It's hard to make her understand. He wanted nothing less of Daisy than that she should go to Tom and say, I never loved you. After she had obliterated four years with that sentence, they could decide upon the more practical measures to be taken. One of them was that, after she was free, they were to go back to Louisville and be married from her house, just as if it were five years ago. And she doesn't understand, he said. She used to be able to understand. We'd sit for hours. He broke off and began to walk up and down a desolate path of fruit rinds and discarded favors and crushed flowers. I wouldn't ask too much of her, I ventured. You can't repeat the past. Can't repeat the past? He cried incredulously. Why, of course you can. He looked around him wildly as if the past were lurking here in the shadow of his house, just out of reach of his hand. I'm going to fix everything just the way it was before, he said, nodding determinedly. She'll see. And as I sat there brooding on the old unknown world, I thought of Gatsby's wonder when he first picked out the green light at the end of Daisy's dock. He had come a long way to this blue lawn, and his dream must have seemed so close that he could hardly fail to grasp it. 
he did not know that it was already behind him. Somewhere back in that vast obscurity beyond the city, where the dark fields of the Republic rolled on under the night. Gatsby believed in the green light, the orgastic future that year by year recedes before us. It eluded us then, but that's no matter. Tomorrow we will run faster, stretch out our arms farther. And one fine morning, so we beat on, boats against the current, borne back ceaselessly into the past.